can do the championship and still have the chance to, to play there. And he's getting a second ban. chance right now, which is pretty impressive. And he, he wants it. Yeah, okay. Coach Shane. Coach Shane. Red Eye. Don't listen EG's to him. Shakira's not the hero. <laughs> <laughs> but stick to what you've been doing all tournament. DC's don't don't be phased by it. Your drafts have been phenomenal. The last game we drafted well. We just missed our timing by a little window. And EG played extremely well. So we just need maybe a more of a balanced draft that can, in all stages of the game, meet EG. And just stick to what you're doing because it's working. I like that. I'm, I'm actually, I actually want to go out and play now. I, I feel like I could, I could you can stick it in the mid. And I could, I could carry the team pick. through. God, final words before we head into the draft. I think the, the team that's going to play the most fearlessly is going to be the one that comes out on top. You can't, can't play too scared, can't play too cautious. All right, sounds like good advice to me. Coaches all around here. Let's head back downstairs for the draft for Ten game seconds. three. Beastmaster. Welcome back inside, everybody. We're getting ready EG's for game number three of Digital Chaos versus EG. Only one of these teams can move on to meet up against Wings in the grand final. I'm back at my drafting station here with Blitz, Merlini, and Waga. Gentlemen, let the draft begin. It looks like EG are going to be having the first pick, and they quickly Ten snag up the Elder remaining. Titan. DC go right for the Beastmaster and accompany it with the Five Shadow Demon already. Remaining. Yeah, it's curious to see. In the previous series, both teams ignored uh, Shadow Demon Reserve fully, actually. Time. So it wasn't prioritized. It was not banned Tied either. Hunter. And uh, here we see it coming back again with the Beastmaster DC's combo. Wow. Already uh, what could be our first somewhat peculiar pick. What does that say to us right now, Will? Uh, early Tidehunter grab when you're passing over some of the more notorious known universe options. I think the biggest thing is they want to be able to counterpick the Digital Chaos mid hero with Ten one of the supports. Remaining. So they're waiting to pick one of those. You can wait to pick your carry and your uh, mid laner, especially remaining. we saw how well it worked out when EG were able to last pick that Dusa. So I think for uh, EG, they simply take the Tidehunter. It's a good matchup against the Beastmaster EG's if they want to go one-on-one -on -one or go for an aggro. It works out quite well, as we saw in the last game. Adds a lot of flavor to the team fight, and especially on Dire side, you can just stick that guy into the Ancients. He can get his prerequisite farm. I think Moo's the hero, on uh, the player on Digital Chaos, that you need a break if you're evil geniuses. I think uh, picking remaining. the Tidehunter is going to make it very difficult for him on the Beastmaster. Uh, we've seen Five a couple of games where Moo has remaining. had really terrible performances. Uh, the, his bat, Beastmaster game versus TNC's Batrider, that was DC's especially critical for them. And then bad. last game on his Faces Void, they were forced to push high ground because evil geniuses had the late game advantage. They needed to go, they weren't quite ready, and then he hits a Chrono on a solo of Nezusa outside the base, which was the beginning of the end for, for Digital Chaos. Do you think any part of that at all Ten is also because, like, remaining. maybe they also want to make sure they get Weeha on something that he can also thrive in the later game? Five Let's say if Mu does fall remaining. short, they'll have at least Weeha there to kind of be able to step up. You can't only step up so much when you have a Jakiro, I imagine. Time. Yeah, I think that was one of those pocket picks that they decided to try out for that game. Push the pace, give EG a little bit something different. But at the same time, what's been standard for DC is they give... Uh, we have one of those heroes similar to what Samil plays, something that can scale later into the game, that can carry if things go wrong, and I feel like they shouldn't get away from that concept. That's the interesting thing. They play fairly similar mid heroes, apart from Samil maybe not playing as much Invoker, and DC really being the only team that has had great success with Invoker as TI. Uh, I feel they have sort of the same heroes that they go towards. So, second phase here, we see EG banning out the Invoker. Pretty expected. EG's the storm gets removed with respect to, to Samil. And I think there's a lot of folks on the mid hero right now. You pretty much have to consider getting it in Lex 2. That ban, though, on Wyvern uh, leads me to believe that uh, DC do want to get something to do a bit of a split push game, I'd imagine. That's been a go to counter pick for a lot remaining. of teams to prevent a lot of the heavy illusion you know, pressure. It's just a great hero Five against Beastmaster remaining. in general. And then Shadow Demon works as well, because if you true. time it to the illusions. But it's mainly about Reserve the attack speed of our own Beastmaster. Yeah. You make everyone just kill their teammates so fast. We've seen DC's some amazing Wind Wyvern pick. situational picks here at TI. Now, do you think DC would consider just going right for the one of the you know luxurious cores that you can pair with this Shadow Demon right now, or is that a bit too soon to begin to show your hand? I think the problem with that is Ten that Elder Titans on the side remaining. of Evil Geniuses, oh, like Terror Blade, Morphling, really good with Shadow Demon, however, very seconds, terrible for Elder Titan. We saw a lot of uh, ter uh, Terror Blade and Morphling throughout the group stage because Elder Titan was often banned out. Reserve but time. now that he's in, I don't know, those look a lot less attractive. I think Luna is probably a little bit uh, better, warrior. especially versus Tide. Whoa, right to Fuzzy EG's Wuzzy here, the third pick for pick. DC. I actually think that's most likely going to be a Wii hero, just because yeah. Resolution, it just doesn't pair with the Shadow Demon whatsoever. Weeha plays there, so almost every single time that I've seen them pick it, I believe it's been Wii. And they also just, 
We is ten seconds remaining. We play Ursa on mid. The thing is, he's very hard to shut down. In fact, and they can still put it solo Five against Tide Hunter if they remaining. want to. But most likely, it's going to be a mid hero for them. We'll have to Reserve see if EG time. can read that situation and be prepared for it appropriately. Like you mentioned, either putting the Tide Hunter there in an audible call, or I don't know, maybe you get something like a Timber Sand King that we've been seeing do favor a lot of these melee one on one matchups. But Earth is going to have trouble having uptime, though. They don't have, like, the best team fight. Just Beastmaster, single target, Roar. Not great versus Tidehunter. Like, Elder Titan, I think, is going to be a huge problem this game in terms of limiting Digital Chaos's team fight. Yeah, I don't know if EG really could afford going for a Sanking as well here. It feels a little bit like they commit too much to the, um, to the heroes that get close and personal. You could risk getting kited a lot. They can still just swap it over and have... Um, a different elusive hero, such as Puck, who goes well with the Ursa. So, I'm not sure about Sanking coming in. I think Sanking as well, going for the three melee, none of them tower pushers, none of them really able to siege. It's almost too much of an overcommitment in team fight. The downside of having two major team fight heroes like that is, if neither of them are BKB breakers, they just overlap in what they want to do. It's not like hitting the Ravage into the epicenter or something that you can always expect. I think EG might be considering going for like a Venge Terrorblade kind of thing here, actually. By the looks of things, when you have Tide Ulti and Elder Titan, two really strong things for securing the team fights. If you have a Terrorblade early on as well, you can push so hard. And at minute 10, 11 mark, Terrorblade clear it. Ancients really, really fast. And he matches up fairly well against Ursa, I feel. I think they could just use more team fight because, <laughs> as usual, versus an Ursa, you're concerned about the Roshan. They already had the Elder Titan to scout him out. Pick. But, like, right now, Digital Chaos, they can't really go into the pit versus the Elder Titan and the Tidehunter. And I think you want to keep going in that direction. Force Ursa to not get that first Rosh and then just slowly peek off until your cores get enough farm. EG do go right for the PPD Ten grab and picking remaining. up the Dazzle. This is normally where I say, well, watch out for Huskar. But with DC picking up the remaining. Ursa, that's not very likely, it seems. Nah, it's just a comfort hero for PPD, and I also think they Reserve demonstrated time. in the last game how important Weave can be. I think that was one of the games that I've seen ever where Weave has the biggest impact. It was insane. Yeah, yeah. I think they could actually just go for Dusa again. With Dusa, Tidehunter, Elder Titan, like their team fight is ex extraordinarily good. They have no way to stop the Medusa from dealing damage, no good defusal carriers. Ursa's like mediocre because he doesn't build Manta. Yeah, uh, it's probably to a point that Digital Chaos, if the mid hero is not picked, before the last pick, they should probably ban out Dusa over Huskar, even yeah. against the Dazzle. Agreed. After we saw the first two openers, I think Dusa makes the most sense for EG, but Digital Chaos, I think they've kind of thought about that. They have not the best heroes against it, but at the same time, you still have two hero picks remaining. You can pick something uh, as a support that can deal with her, at least in the early game. Just because I feel like you can pressure her pretty heavily in lane. That's the one thing about Dusa. You just want to gank her once or twice, slow down her farm progression, then get active around the map because she's not going to rotate early on to help the other lanes. I wonder if DC could yeah, get, in, get something for themselves with that maybe extra support spot that would be good against the Medusa in preparation. Coddle Manalik is not too bad, I heard. <laughs> Nyx Assassin, Big maybe. fan of Coddle? Yeah. Maybe. We kind of need a Misery Hero though, right? Yeah, I believe so. Ten He's been going to the Kunka a lot. Admiral but... Kunka! Oh, snap. And he goes again, Will. EG's Wonderful turn to pick. They're yeah. going to pair the Kunka Shadow Demon once again. It's hard in the 5v5 scenario, though, when you're against Dazzle, because when you play the Shadow Demon Kunka, you're kind of trying to eliminate one guy really quick. Same for a Beastmaster. And actually, Ursa does the same thing. They need to go on several different targets now. DC's oh, good call on the turn to yeah. Thanks, nice. boy. I think, uh, imagine if they went like Ogre or Bounty Hunter or Riki instead of the Kunkka, though, they would just like get crushed in the team fight. They'd have good roam and okay lanes, but overall, though, the, the team fights would just really go EG's way. Terror lane, as you mentioned. Ten yeah, seconds it's just a remaining. very natural pairing with the Tide ulti. Like, you push so early, and Terrorblade hits that peak. When he gets the Dragonlance uh, Treads early on EG's in the laning phase, there's not much ban. that can fight against him during the Metamorphosis. You kind of just have to forfeit the towers. Yeah. Also, if you look at DC's lineup, they have very few ways to deal with them when it comes to the later parts of the game. Like, yep. He can kite around the Ursa. He's going to go for something like the Scotty. There's a lot of single Ten target focus on him. Remaining. There's a Dazzle, like you said, on the other side. Exactly. And Terrorblade is one of those Illusion heroes Five that does stack up his Illusions close to each other and then fight. And the only AoE they have is really, well, Kunkka. He brings most of it, the ship, if he lands it. Um, whereas some other Illusion heroes like Naga, you don't care about having AoE damage because they're going to split push anyway. 
I think DC also have an armor problem, similar to last game. They have ET and Dazzle again on the side of EG, and there's no Warcry, no anything. I think last game they had to buy so many armor items that they couldn't do any damage in the fights. This game is something similar. I would like to see remaining. some armor hero, maybe Sven, I suppose. Sven's pretty okay, but at the same time, I think Brew he's going to just get master. kited up, okay. and he's going to be taken wow. out altogether, oh, and EG go right for the pick. Brewmaster here. That's so good against Ursa. I, I like it. It's very brave to go for a Brewmaster here, but... Just a Cyclone on the Ursa, chain cycloning him in the team fights, and then a Drunken Haze impact as well. You can mess so much with DC's lineup. Ten seconds remaining. It's kind of heavy committal though, but you do have the Terror Blade to fall back on. I mean, there's Five no way they can burst him down remaining. before his, his ulti in any fight. Like, I, I, even without the Grave, I think it's really difficult. Reserve yeah, I feel time. DC are gonna struggle since they don't really have any silence Five or anything like that. Remaining. I, I would love to see a puck Slug. for them, honestly, but... Uh, they're gonna go for Resolution Slark. Trusty Slark. I mean, you got one draft left potentially oh, in your tournament life. And I guess they go for a comfort pick here, gentlemen. Now that we do see the spread before us, what do you think it's gonna happen here for game number three? I think EG have probably the more well rounded lineup. I just think that the team fight is gonna be a little bit too hard. You have a Terrorblade who I think is gonna scale very well in a game like this. I'm gonna go with EG for game number three. I also go with EG. I think they have heavy physical damage, not really countered by anything on Digital Chaos, and I think DC are gonna really struggle to get Roshan. I think DC are doing pretty much the same as they've done in previous series. They have their own unique style, but it looks like EG has figured it out. They have adapted a lot in the series, and DC have not. I think EG got this. Sounds good. Let's do it, folks. It's the last game. Game number three. Evil Geniuses versus Digital Chaos. Let's send it over remaining. to our courtside casters now. It's LD and Mott. Mott Five wins seconds are remaining. waiting. Comfortable in the grand finals. EG, they've been here before. They got knocked down to the lower bracket last year. They bounced back in a tough three-game series, and they made it to the grand finals. The analysts have little faith in the DC trap. Prepare you and I were talking, is this a Meepo game? Could this be a tanker game, potentially, with the heavy five-man push from EG? DC go more to the comfort pick here in the Slark. Who do you got for this one? You know, I, I kind of agree with the panel with EG and the, the picks they have, but I feel like uh, th there is still ways for DC to win. Resolution can still get farmed up, even as farmed as he was last game. He's, he did struggle, but he can still absolutely take over this game. He has plenty of damage later on down the road. And and some early roams from these DC supports as well could actually have a huge impact, but it is game three, and this is the, it's all or nothing right now for both of these teams with this draft. By far the most interesting pick is Sumail on that Brewmaster and how much he can get done. This, this is this like game. a taste of TI4 where we would see the super heavy five-man lineups, the old EG style where they'd get like the Enigma Tidehunter, the Void Enigma, the Brewmaster, the big five-man death ball type strategy. It's a different engine for the push though, the Terror Blade. Something that wasn't seen nearly as much back then, but it's equally fearsome in the five man in its own right. Even now, I think the Terror Blade is still falling off in comparison to where he was at Manila and before Manila, or before TI as well, even in the group stages. I feel like Terror Blade has not seen the light of day for a period of time. They, uh, it's a decent Terror Blade game though. Like uh, The thing I liked about a potential Tinker pick is it gives the them a really good begins. way to do with the Illusion Swarm and just the general early five man, but you don't sweet. have the best Illusion clear. Like for DC to do well, the, sure Kunkka can potentially if he gets super farm, but realistically it's a four position Kanka. You can't expect him to deal with the illusions on his own. They have very little wave clear aside from that. Shadow Poison takes a while to stack up. Isn't going to deal with the main TB. He's protected by a Dazzle. There's no counter for Grave this game. So I think it's like you said that DC really do need to get something out of the Shadow Demon Kanka. If not in the first couple minutes, then definitely with that first smoke rotation, those early movements. And RC Soxa is starting one with one here. As the battle of the bruisers rages in mid. Sumail skills the clap early. Uh -oh. Generally is the first ability you pick up, but it means there's no evasion chance here. I'm so Miha can go in. They get out of the zone. He's low already. The pounce will come through, leeching him up. Is this going to be first blood? Size low. Not dead yet. And he will go down. That's it huge. Right click from Zaxa. That gets it done. Sumail grabbing the point now. Drunken Brawler. So this, this is where he can equalize things. With the Ursa, you have the attack speed slow uh, of the Thunderclap. You have evasion from Drunken Brawler. Almost certainly expect to see at least one point Drunken Haze. And at that point, that early damage, the pressure that Weeha was putting out, not going to be as easy to do. So important for DC to get kills in the other lanes. Really nice start here. Zai going for the early point in Astral Spirit. It's, it's nice when there's three heroes to run it through, but 
The early point in Echo Stomp is the more defensive build, and it has allowed a lot of teams to get out of situations like that. Bottom so in this bottom lane, again, they're kind of leashed here because there's an aggressive dual lane to nail. The right clicks a bit more Earth Shock. It does hit, I think, a little bit. They have the... He's going for this. Is there going to be a base? No, sir. Weehaw gets it done. Level 2 Fury Swipe. That's all of that it takes, and if you said no misses. You're good. You're I good mean, it's go. a 10% dodge. You cannot rely on the dodge at this stage. It's when you combine it with the Drunken Haze, but Sumail not level 3 yet. That's where the miss chance becomes very high. 45% chance to miss on top of the 10% evasion. He is going to skill up the level 2 clap. So still, Weeha can find openings here, especially if he gets a good rune. Yeah. Down, he's but up the good rune go goes to Zai as he does grab an invis. Yeah, Zai will be down bottom parodying up and looking for maybe more trouble. You can see that. How far Soxa is, he's shadow poisoning, zoning out universe, but he might be able to make it go on Soxa, he's a little too far up. The stop, there it is, they caught him. They bring him down in time, I don't think so. Two stack of shadow poisoning. This Brother. could go poorly for them, Taurus coming out, then the pounce forward onto universe, with resolution engages, dropping them low, gets off the anchor smash, it's gonna lock him in place now. The follow-up damage isn't enough though, a great two hero stop, and Misery needs this Taurus to connect, universe gonna juke it, there's no pounce to go through, and Misery yeah. trapped in the trees, no regen, Dead to the club of the Elder Titan, and they're doing a 2v3. They don't have a point in Soul Catcher, and it's only level 2 Shadow Demon, so they don't really have the burst damage. I think you really want to be going on the Elder Titan there, rather than the Tidehunter, who already has two points in Kraken Shell, but until they get more levels on these supports, kills on the Tide are going to be hard to come by. It's just too tanky at this point, like you said, with the Kraken Not Shell. Not yours! Base, base, base HP as well, but... They got him so low because the Anchor Smash hadn't gotten off, but once he got off, it was very difficult to continue damaging him. I, I like the rotation, though, to mid, as they're setting up for maybe a Torrent kill here onto Sumail, and another kill huge. They stopped him from farming before when he was playing that Dusa, bring, bringing him down a second time, especially when the first time was a solo kill. But look, Very at, important. look at how well Zai is reading the map, already pinning out the likelihood that Misery has left the lane. They have a good Observer Ward in the enemy jungle. They don't actually see the Elder Titan, but they also don't see him pulling or in the area, so they get suspicious about his position. Instead, Misery will move all the way top here. Moo is not level 6. Difficult to set up a kill. Possible to run down the Terrorblade, but it's a Dazzle lane. There's still a skill point about to be available. He can grab the level 1 Grave if he'd like. He already torn to the Creep Wave, so it looks like they're not going for a kill. Meanwhile, bottom resolution. He's been left alone, and if you leave a Slark alone against Tidehunter, he is going to get bullied by Anchor Smash. He can get his level 6, and then at least won't, can always heal up under the cover of Shadow Dance, but you can already see Rezo has to back away. If they're not getting kills elsewhere, mod, this is not a, an effective move at all for DC. Thanks like for that. Like if that was an Ursa bottom or something, he would be fine. But given this matchup, he's really going to struggle. And the lane stabilized for EG. A free farming Terror Blade after the early pressure and success mid. Weeha now even, uh, or close to even on CS with Sumail here in front of Francisco. But can he find a kill? Jarkin Haze did come out, so that's the evasion that you were talking about. So Weeha will have a tougher time getting right clicks. But he's going again with the Earth Shock, and he's got the Fury Swipes on. See if you can actually bring him low. I don't think he'll be able to get the kill even with another Earth Shock overpower. And he gets it! The Shadow Wave points to Weeha in range. The stop will come through, though. Another Shadow Wave will put him in a lot of trouble. He heads to the north, PPD. He gets juked. Ursa has high base moves. He's he's up. He can turn this, He's selling up. He wants to die as well. Now the Shadow Wave coming out. He's about to fall. The Great comes out just in time. He's playing this fight so well, Mon. On the high ground, he might be able to make a move on PPD. Misery's coming in. Torrent to save him. Potentially doesn't actually cast it. He gets Weeha is just playing out of his mind this game. That was an incredible series of events. If he had gotten that second kill as well, oh my god, that would have been something. Zai barely limping away, going back to the base. He just he just played it perfectly there, using the enrage right as EG was trying to finish the job, forcing them back by getting enough damage on the other Titan. If he just tries to want run, he probably dies, but instead the other Titan has to back, then it's only the Dazzle trying to focus him down. Good adjustment by Misery to come and assist him as he has managed to collect level 4. I think the, the slight worry here for DC is that Slark is getting pretty heavily outfarmed and 
He's not a great hero against five man anyway, so you really don't want to be behind. But Sumail mid, barely getting off the split. They force it out. Nicely done by DC. As long as they can disengage, but misery being hounded here. There's another boulder toss likely to drop. He will go down. Lost it looks like the last right ceilings. push coming in. They lose the Kunkin support. They force out that ultimate. BG. They're happy with how that went. They you know. almost had him. He was so low. Yeah, he really was. You want bottom though. Rezo getting yeah. chased down. He pounces the universe, blocks it. Good disruption here, so we can't get that follow banker smash. And Sansa will save his carry. But the thing to note here isn't that he lives, but rather that he's being pressured out of the lane so heavily. Not a free farm Slark game. Five stacks of the Shadow Poison Green. That side hunter who's very tanky, down pretty low, but Universe is still being aggressive. Resolution still doesn't have six, so he doesn't have that Shadow Dance pass. If he can't stay in lane, when you have that, you can maybe at least get a little bit more farm and be a bit more aggressive, but that's just not the case at this point. And again, you talked about it, the Terra Blade continues to free farm. A very good timing. Whatever item he goes for here, at this point he's got Shreds and Aquila, and he's TPing down bottom as well. His Metamorphosis is up ready to go, and he's got enough mana to use it. They're just gonna death ball, like, behind the Terra Blade. I don't think EG cares all that much about getting kills. It's a bonus if they do. They might find one on Misery. Doesn't have the boat yet, Doesn't only a level 2 Dyer's Shadow Poison. DC's tools for deep pushing are very minimal. And EG recognized that with Ravage online, DC cannot defend their towers right now. They will have to trade. The Beastmaster can't find pick off when the enemy team is five banning. They do attack. catch Misery here. This Radiant's doesn't look great for the Kunkka. Anger Smash, attack. Poison Very Touch, and he's dead. EG are gaining Steam Mod. They, they have a weakness they can exploit here. It needs to be Weeha stepping up big. He looks for the kill on man. There is no Bruce Quinn. They just need one more, and they will find it. The big problem for EG right now is that Brewmaster. Even so, he's still doing okay in net worth, at least ahead of resolution. Dyer's he's looking for anything. His tower would be super helpful. He needs something to go their way. And a tier 1 trade is actually not that bad. And you consider how this game's been going for this Slark. Yeah, you see getting enough Dyer's out of the lanes to, to not attack. lose hope just yet. They are split pushing effectively. Like, if Weeha wasn't finding all these kills mid, I would say they're in a ton of trouble. With the start he's had, they do have a chance. He's got a haze through now, and he can run on to Zai. But diving the tower against a, a tide is very risky, so we hobble back away. Now the Bruce split also functional. EG have two ultimates ready to defend this tower. Still no Kunkka boat. Misery knows he really has to get his ultimate if they want to take fight. Slark Radiant's cannot stop the push. Shadow attack. Demon can only slow Dyer's it down. Ursa can't run in against fight. Instead, he's going to try to isolate Fear. He does find the Terror Blade, but can he burst him down? Fear has 17 armor. Everyone is coming right now, but we are this under perfectly timed. And Rage is not able to do enough. He'll try to TP. Still a really door. nice play by Weeha, though. By isolating Fear, he drags EG away from the tower mid. He forces out the Sunder. He slows them down while DC continue to split push. Now the Kunkka boat about to come out. They may lose the tower, but the overall maneuver still Radiant's very sound. Who's coming attack. in mid. Oh, he may get caught, though. He doesn't have mana for a war. Clap, but no follow-up. They are slowing this thing down a bit. EG just don't want to commit their ultimates until they have guaranteed kills. And... With Terrorblade Metamorphosis still cooling down, he's not going to join the fight, which means EG, I think, trying to push too soon. They should be pushing around the Metamorphosis timing, but they're not doing so. This is giving DC a lot of time to farm. And all of a sudden, with barely any kills happening the past couple minutes, DC are back on top. I mean, it's just as they want to fight with those ultimates, it seems like, but they just can't find the pickoffs. And even when they find Weeha, he's already too fast. He's chasing after that Terra Blade. Yeah, he gets the Sunder off. Dyer's bottom he could have gotten the kill there. Instead, it, again, that's also what you talked about. It slows the push down even further because they all rotate over to help him. So um, that Tier 1 tower stays alive in the mid lane. You can see right now, the Terra Blade is top of the net worth, but it's still, again, Sumail has to find a way to catch back up into this game. Get a blink dagger here at some point and, in time. And Brew is not Dyer. a great comeback hero by any stretch. Uh, as Dyer's far as farming goes, he can fight his way back into the game sometimes, but he, if he wants to farm his way back in, he's going to get completely outclassed by Beastmaster. Mu going for the Necro Book. Mana Burn is a big concern for some of these EG heroes, especially Brewmaster, who's had a bad start. There's no Arcane Boots on him. PPD's nowhere near them. Zai has one set, but the Mana Burn could pose problems for him. Actually, another pair in Universe. Uh, especially if the brew gets caught away from Radiant's his team or the cooldown have been used, so attack. has to be careful he's enough mana for Radiant that split. But now Metamorphosis is up and EG are going to push again. Lehigh is getting ever so close to that blink dagger. And he has a great time to go, and he has a double damage room, but I just don't think they can defend this. 
with all the shadow coins in it will still go down if you get attack. that tier one mid. Yeah. Getting some extra gold to go their way along with it, but it took them a while though, and all the all the ways DC splitting the map up, Clark farming, Konka farming, EG five manning. Normally this team is known for doing a really good job at distributing farm and not falling behind as far as economy goes. That's how they're able to take the E home series into the ultra late game and still come out on top. They're just not used to having Sumail this far behind, so I I still Dyer's think EG's 5-man is extremely attack. strong, but honestly, this is about as good as you can expect for DC, especially with that, that bottom lane not going that smoothly after the first blood. They they struggled to farm the Slark, but he's caught up. DC are still in good shape here. It feels like almost DC are spreading the map a little bit better, and far better, actually, than EG, and that's what you were talking about. That's where their strengths lie, and DC are taking over now. It looks like they're going to maybe... They have Blink on Ursa now. Dyer's he also has a DD rune mod on our solo as well. He can pop the DD. He will. And they're gonna go for this tier one tower. No glyph available, one more hit. He's got Dyer's nine. middle tower. Very nicely played by Weeha. Takes the tower Dyer's from right under the nose of EG. Universe going for the mech build, so they don't really have the best catch. Brewmaster Blink still not available against the Slark and a and Ursa with a Blink. These are mobile heroes. You also have X to allow them to play more aggressively and still be pulled back to safety. They can really get away with some deep, bold movements against EG and EG very much committed to five man Dota. Snail is sitting at 1900 though, so his blink dagger is almost done. But here comes Resolution. Almost wants to force out that Bruce foot as well. And if they have that down, they can feel a little bit more comfortable. Universe is on his way towards his mech as well. This man has been an absolute godsend for the team. And now he's looking to make another play. His DD rune has worn off, but he's got an invis mod here, very far behind the tower. Even Zai, super far back, but somehow we have still find an instant stop. Oh, he bleeps oh, out, almost stopping it. Does end up getting caught, but now the purge on the fear. They're gonna keep him out of the fight and try to get their curse out safely. He has been caught by the clan. He's got the ultimate our splitter coming through. This one's gonna hurt. We will end up going down a very deep dive. Can they counter this anywhere? Looks like they maybe try to set up on Universe, but Tide is, is too tanky of a target. That was a huge kill. Insane reactions there from Zai. It seemed like they may have known that the invis had been popped. So he was very quick to react. I have to say, though, while that was happening, they still do get that tower down bottom. Mu is foot pushing, and he has his book one now as well. So they're getting items on other heroes. It's not just Weeha. Shuri goes down there, and it was a deep dive. I think she almost was able to blink away from that split, that stomp. That would have been enough. so sick, because he has the move speed to run back in and kill him at that point with phase boots. Here's the smoke from Misery and from Moo. They do see PPD. They have the Necro, but they can quickly kill him with a roar. But the stomp is there. Again, it's Zai in position to save the day. The book's going to hit, but PPD able to withstand this offense. And now they have to back. There's a Ravage ready to prove blink. I don't think it's been scouted. He goes in for the initiation. He fights Oxo with the clap, but that's not the worst kill to give up. They even come a split just for a shadow demon. Not terrible, all they consider for DC, but can they find more? They're chasing after Moo. A follow up clap is there. Zai stops him. Rezo on to fear. We huh? Retreating rapidly, he's far out of position to assist Moo. Fear wants to bring him down, but we tries to save him. The whole oh, is not enough. The right drop keeps him alive. Moo still getting chased out by Illusions in Universe. Now bottling up on the north. There's going to be more fighting happening. And finally, Resolution about to fall. Looks like he will go down to water. Has the right pounce, flicks. has the shadow play, but he leaves so oh, with a certain death. The <laughs> protection flick <laughs> there by Sumail. I think he dies to the tower anyway, but. DC overplaying their hand a bit. Rabbit wasn't even used there. Moo will disconnect. Oh. Gives DC a chance to collect their thoughts. They were actually up by 2,500 gold prior to that fight. With EG holding the kill lead, they have done a very good job And as far as the overall game plan goes. I think that's the important thing to highlight here is DC know their five man is just not as good. Even if you hit like a perfect boat torrent, you probably still don't take the fight at this stage of the game. They have spread EG out, but they're pushing it just a little bit too far. They have to be patient, continue to let the Slark farm. At some point, maybe the Ursa, the Beastmaster, can try to sneak towards the Roshan pit with that tier one down bottom. And already, you can see EG, they have their own ambitions. EG at this point, I mean, they're down a couple thousand, I think 2,000 in terms of net worth right now, but it's not that much. And especially with the terribly farming as he is, he has the Dragonlance. You can see already that they're kind of setting up. They, there is a lot of vision here in the jungle for the rating team. DC have some very good vision as well. So moving forward right now, I don't think you want to fight as DC until you maybe get a, a BKB on Ursa or the Necro 3 coming out for a Beastmaster. It's probably the most important item to have that mana drain to make sure you can actually 
and, and the damage that it deals also is pretty insane as well. So, and the five man that you have from EG is just, there's too many uh, ultimates. You have the Earth Splitter, you have the Ravage, Sunder, obviously Metamorphosis, and the Bruce Split. There's just too much to deal with for DC at this point. Yeah, but they can play around the cooldowns, which so far they've done quite a good job of. I, I wonder what Weeha's going for here. Does grab the Belt of Giant Strength. Normally this would be a basher on Ursa, but generally you don't see that as the first item. I suppose a possible Sanj pickup. It's a Ags. bit unusual. More often it is the Ags build, BKB. Uh, it's a Fusal Blade is an occasional pickup. I know CTY really popularized that build as EG now need their own moment here. I'm just getting some it wouldn't be an idota without a smiley face mark. I'm just waiting on or question pauses. Marks. One of those two things. We haven't got enough question marks for my face, though. I have to tell you, <laughs> this has been a very mannered international so far. The team's trying to keep things loose for themselves, but there is so much pressure. If DC were relaxed going into game two, they have to be a little more nervous now. Tournament lives on the line. So too for EG Sumail. Another game where he's had a rough start. Almost always when EG have won this tournament, it has been with Sumail just taking over. But this game, it's a totally different str strategic approach from EG, and he won't win the game solo. It's going to be a team effort for them. Sumail, he's picked up the gloves of haste, and I don't think he has the belt of strength, so... He may very well go for a Midas. It might be a little bit of time, but we've seen that when the Masters have struggled in the past. Yeah. Midas is always a good choice to get back into the game. He's one of those heroes that works really well with it. But... And his ultimate scales very well. The duration increases, uh, and the cooldown goes down substantially. So just getting levels on Brewmaster alone is quite important, so there's less downtime for your ultimate. You already have a lot of downtime just with Ravage Whoa. alone, and it's going to be a very long time before Universe gets a refresher. Whereas DC, they're the lineup that can pretty much always fight. The boat has a one minute cooldown, even at level one. Slark has very uh, frequent uptime on all of his spells. Obviously, Dyer's Ursa, Beastmaster. Basically, every minute, DC have their full complement of spells. EG, the ones who need to fight around cooldown, so the levels do matter quite a bit Dyer's here for Brewmaster. But DC, they'll take the tier two top. They probably realize that EG Dyer's are in the road pit, especially now that attack. we just see Zai and Sumail confidently roaming around the river. They already saw a couple of DC heroes out. They know DC is not coming to contest, but DC is still getting significant trades as Misery Dyer's looks to slow things down with the torrent. Sumail trying to get on him. Doesn't want to commit a split just for him. There might be a boat. We could see a Aegis snipe potentially as Weeha moves in. Misery is getting caught by Sumail though, and he's going to get stunned up with his stop. Sumail's TP home, it looks like a fear. The actually oh, oh, the TP back. Sumail can't come to defend. Already this tier Dyer's 3 top is almost fallen on. DC Dyer's are ratting this one out. Sunder comes through. We have to look the engagement there. Now it looks like he's about to pull the Enraged Ravage with you, Tom. No, and they actually will bring down the Tidehunter. Now they're going to the Rage Track. DC are about to get a Rage Track at 16 minutes in. They lose Weeha, they lose the Kaka, they give up an Aegis. But the Ravage committed, the Brewmaster split down. The top lane caved in. This buys a lot of time, Earth Splitter not going to connect, Resolution sneaking away. What a brilliant maneuver by DC. Misery with the X there on the Brewmaster, preventing Sumail from defending home. Universe ravaging too late. They might even lose Moo. That would be a third Zazzle. hero dying. Has bought out. Moo will end up going down, but I think he bought maybe two recipes. Yes, he has the Necro 3 now. So he doesn't really lose any gold. It's it's a very even trade, I want to say, overall. Like, a Range Rex is not that catastrophic for EG. They still have the Aegis on the Terror Blade, but they had to use their ultimates. And even though they got three kills, Beastmaster doesn't lose any gold. It's it's a pretty it's a pretty back and forth exchange there. I think neither team, like, oh my god, we just crushed them in that fight. That's the killing blow by it. It's, it's still up in the air, Mod, but this next round of action could determine a lot. Metamorphosis ready in 20 minutes, and now what the analyst talks about is gonna come to pass. EG will sit behind the Terra Blade, ready with the Grave, and just constantly siege towers. But can DC hold? This, this time there's again, like you said, no more ultimates. The Brewmaster should still be on cooldown for a period of time. 54 seconds for that, 66 for Ravage, so they still have some time before Radiant's those ultimates are up. You don't attack. really want to fight into Aegis, but you can definitely defend this tower, I think. Then. He's By saving Metamorphosis here. EG, perhaps signaling Radiant's they want to go for more than even just a tier two, potentially. Well, think about a tier three, but the defenses are being mustered by Digital Chaos. They're sweeping around the river, Mott. Radiant's to top tower is under attack. Radiant's top tower is under attack. But they're going to go even further and look for a tier two. 
There's a sentry ward planted down, though. They are ready Dyer's for that Slark to move in. Is under attack. This is very dangerous. And the, the spirit Dyer's scouts all, so there won't be an easy killed. ambush, but the courier does get sniped. Big pick off there. Still, Terrorblade begins to mount his siege. He's still waiting to go in from the back side. DC, they finally say, I don't think we can do anything about this. That's a key high ground item. Not having mantle for fear is a big is deal. Attack. This may have saved DC from a, a potential high ground siege. Wonder if EG is going to wait. They do still have, it looks Radiant's like, about three minutes fallen. on the Aegis, but that's about how long it'll take Dyer's the courier to come back to. Two and a half. Attack. And now they move in. Rezo doesn't have any way to cancel TP, so Dyer's he won't find a pick off. We are also poking in mid. DC just trying to spread this map out. Earth is the one with the bash. Your resolution went for the Echo Saber and the Shadow Blade. Typical build, but for now, Fierce Venomorphous is going to cool down here pretty soon. And yeah, I think they maybe could have gone tier threes with the Ravage as well as the Brew Split available. They were trying, DC were trying to split push while that was happening, but they took the tier two tower so fast they're able to TP back in and defend that tier two mid. So for now, it's just going to be splitting up and farming again. And DC are going to have to find a way to fight around those team fight abilities. Yeah, spreading the map is the best way, so if you get ravaged, as we saw top, it's one or two heroes, there might not be any follow-up damage, same for the Bruce split. Killing those heroes, very difficult. Uh, I, it's, it's two completely different styles, either can work here, it really does just come down to execution, which is what you want out of a game three. Outdraft, not necessarily the most exciting, but this really feels like both teams have their own game plan and either can absolutely work. It feels like we're waiting for that one big fight for EG. For DC, they're just going to try to split up the map as best as possible, as you talked about. The Tier 2 towers, though, are still up and available. And DC want to take those down so they have access to the other Tier 3s. I mentioned that melee rex top lane, and Zai about to get picked yeah. off. There it is. Tom is it going to come through. Doesn't matter. Who jams it in? There is, however, a blink of high universe coming in. Just the ages, though. Universe, he blinked in. Now looking for the with your Ravik. The gut is on resolution, but he can't find any follow-up. Oh, that's so big for DC. Universe reveals the blink. They pop the Aegis. And now EG, even afraid to move forward despite having their ultimates, they want to wait for the Elder Titan to respawn. God, that takes a lot of momentum out of this EG five-man push. The resolution continues to just shadow blade up on the sidelines and can we go again? Looking to try to find another hero here, but these hit and run tactics mod. Very impressive. It's difficult to execute this against a team as coordinated as EG. It's like guerrilla warfare from the tree line coming out from the Slark in almost every situation, but EG will move together again. It's that five-man movement, or at least four-man movement, as they will have the Zai Elder Titan respawn, and they're going to push out the top lane. And the hawk, the hawk is just so good against this style of fight from EG. Like, you always see the when they're coming. Mu doing a good job at keeping vision. You can see another hawk closer uh, to the EG base. This is what enables their aggressive Whoa. split push and aggressive spreading of the map is the vision game. Mu, he was very quiet early. Iron Talent, AFK Jungle Beastmaster. That's where all the other lanes aside from mid seem to struggle a bit, but now that he's gotten his levels, has the Necro Book, he starts to have a bigger impact on the stretch. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering what he's going to go for next. The, the Blink Dagger, I don't believe they have a glide, so he could also go down that route as well. The Blink Dagger might be crucial to find an initiation on someone like Jamil. X Marks Torrent's going to come in, no Ghost Ship to follow up, just showing that they have some, some spells to use, although does do minimal damage for Misery, and he'll back up. But poking away bottom lane, the Irritant Resolution, a thorn in the side of EG, and they have to come defend again, and as they're doing that, well, Universe flicks in, does he dare go on Rezo, there's the disruption by Sasha, and meanwhile, Tompley, Beastmaster, split push again, EG have to be careful not to get pushed in too hard in this lane, Fear isn't with them either, they're, they're getting pulled around quite a bit. This is tough. Nice. And even if they get that Slark kill, that's, it's obviously bad for DC. It's not a disaster by any means. Weeha still farming, Beastmaster still farming. Not to mention, uh, even the Kunkka of Misery keeping his own economy up. He's got 2,500 gold mod. We saw that Crystalist Bloodthorn for Misery yesterday. We might see it again, but top lane, it moves and caught out here. So the universe went around and he says, hell yeah. That is one ultimate down. They still have plenty more to use, and that is a pretty big kill. Move is split pushing like crazy, so I don't think... DC should feel like there's an opening, even with Ravage down. Still something that you have to consider that Bruce Split is up, all those other abilities for EG are ready to go. Oh, they're definitely more confident with Ravage down. You can see the way they're moving in, even though it's 4v5. Deep. Aggressive plays by Resolution. Gets that quick little bash on Sumail. Hey, buddy, how you doing? And backs away. 
They're getting in the heads of EG though. Like EG is constantly reacting. Notice like they're they're not executing their game plan, which is sit behind Terrorblade, five man, have the Dazzle Grave ready. If DC dare contest, you just jump in with the big ultimate. They're the reactive team. This is not how EG want to be playing. EG, they would like to be again. They have such a good five man push and team fight lineup, but they just can't find a way to, to split up and push these waves out, you know? You don't have that Naka Siren that can constantly use the Radiance Burn and the Illusion. The Ghost Ship is coming in mid. And it will hit Sheer, but that's it. Just trying to clear out the creep wave. And again, they, it's Gorilla Tactics from DC to just clear out every wave they can. And Sox says ratting it out bottom. This feels like the old Cloud Nine almost. <laughs> anyway, 2000, not here at TI, but his spirit living on. We're gonna try to push mid Radiance finally. The Middle Tower is about to get assaulted. They have popped the metamorphosis. Radiant structures. The difference maker. They have this fast push coming out. Whereas DC, it's slow and steady. And here comes resolution to the top lane again. And already TPs are coming through PG. Anybody home? Anybody home? And he just leaps away. Still, Radiance tier two does fall. But also, tier two Dyer's exchange for DC. They fallen. will take the bottom tower. It's not bad again. Like Rezo going in top again. He wants die. He does get the badge here. Can he get the kill? He will do so. Beautiful pick from the Sarkin. Now they're chasing after PPD. Move hot on his tail, but PPD able to force staff away. That's what happens when you spread up this, spread out this much. Is it's much easier for a hero like Sark to find pickoffs. Especially with that Ravage still down. Universe could have helped if he had that, but there's no way he could do anything. All he could do is sit there and mech at that point in time, just try to keep his eye alive. Unfortunately, he goes down. He's down for 15 seconds, and again, the waves are barely pushed out in this top lane. Even with just a range racks down, it's still a significant tower or melee rack damage if they're not careful. They need to be careful with how this lane is pushed in. You see R kind of far forward here with the Ravage almost up, and Sumail wants to punish. Blinks in, claps, he gets X. They might be able to force out a Bruce split. Next Rose doing some nice mana burn. He still has plenty of mana and 16 charges as well. They're chasing forward though, it looks like. They want to find something. so well. EG has to be incredibly frustrated right now. Universe is looking to go in, but yeah, like you said, I mean, they just, they push forward together and they can't, they can't find anybody. They're all sitting in the trees. And now Misery has a blink uh, as well as 1500 gold picked it up a couple of minutes ago. So he can X himself, blink in, smack the creep wave back away. Moo can just throw out the necro book, safely split push. Shadow Demon blink, he's able to rat. DC just, just pulling out something unexpectedly. You did not look at this draft, I think, for most people, like, oh, this is oh, a rat lineup. Like it was chest. more like, oh, Shadow Demon Kunk are gonna roam. Slark and Ursa need to snowball for kills. They've turned Nothing it into something moves. completely different that EG weren't ready for. It feels like Fear almost has to do all of this on itself, on its own. I mean, there is still that, like, Ravage. There are all, there are all these abilities. He is still farming really it. well. The one thing. Oh, he has a double damage oh. rune. See you later, Zai. That was easy. That's <laughs> very easy. Uh, you, you do make a good point, Mod. Fear does continue to farm exceptionally well, and they don't have the best solution that this did. Oh, Ranzo going for the universe. He it! I can't believe he got it and still chasing. He's got pounce up at two. I'm not sure they need to be. He's got dark back. The pounce. See you later. He has no buyback. Sometimes he just the bought the Guardian Graves. He's out for 40 DC. Fish. Probably not going to go high ground off of that, but potentially a tier two mid is theirs for the taking now. These little pickoffs coming out from Resolution every so often, and it's provided them so much space. First it was Weeha, now Rezo, with the space he was granted earlier, is taking over. And speaking of taking over, Weeha occupying the Roshan pit Dyer's now while they push mid. Well, he's gonna get this. He's, a, he's an Ursa. He should be able to take this down rather quickly. Assuming the badge don't go this split mid there. They really want to defend that tier 2 tower, but the split now and we're out. down, and he doesn't find anything with it at all. Oh, jeez. Another window opens up for DC. Tidehunter now alive again, but Brewmaster split down. Sumail almost got bashed there too. He barely even got off the split. Now Slark has a BKB. And BKB is a great item to have against Brewmaster. You can ignore the boulder toss. You don't have to worry about the Cyclone. The Drunken Haze no longer an issue. This item is a pretty hard counter to the hero. Also has an action sector, by the way. So. That's pretty absurd. They're gonna look for a fight. X marks onto PPD just to make sure he stays where, right where they want him to. And again, split pushing bottom this time. I think EG are gonna go for this one, Mod. Even though they don't have the Bruce split, the Ravage is more important and they are aggressively pushing down mid. At the same time, Beastmaster shoving in the top wave. It might see a trade here. Terrorblade will outpush the Beastmaster. Yeah, absolutely. The Metamorphosis Radiance is already up. They're ready to go. They need to find a fight, even without Bruce split. 
They're ready to go. They're ready to go. They're trying to slow this thing down. So it's a decent amount to clear out the wave, but the illusions are stacking up. This falls so quickly. Disruption's gonna give him at least some illusions on the DC side. Wow. Coming in again, they'll lose the tower. Here comes the resolution on the back of the BKB. And we hot. Sumail in trouble. Doesn't have to split. Not yet anyway. We are getting tied in. Resolution finishes off side. Here comes the universe. He's got it. Dice under by fear, but Resolution just pops the ultimate. Oh, the hell, boss. Pays me in. What a boy. And the Ravage comes out. We hot. Doesn't rage at this point, but it's not rage. And he gets tied at the end. There is Rat though. Bottom lane, it's Mui, draws the turret blade back, and now they're gonna look to chase Weeha. Can he cancel a TP? Doesn't get the bash auto attack off. Still, the top lane was ratted in while that was happening. Mu takes the melee. DC seizing the advantage here. More gold into their coffers. And that was with EG getting off the Sunder, having a sick kill bomb by TPD and the Grave to salvage the fight, and now. They double down on that split push mod, BOTs for Moo. They, they are getting everything they need to be able to wrap this out if need be. Split push, again, I, grill warfare tactics, that's all it takes. You can really see how strong the Slark is in the fight when he has BKB. Like, they could not do anything to him. Could have actually killed the Terror Blade potentially if he had realized how low the Shadow Demon would bring him. And that's the other thing is, they have Shadow Demon versus Terror Blade. This is a great hero to limit his damage and even to create your your own army that can mess him up with the disruption the soul catcher purge a lot of pure damage ignores all that armor on the tb dc not out of the woods yet but they are really testing eg here who he's already, he's are gonna barrel down mid again Mu's already begun his assault in the bottom lane but instead of going mid they're Dyer's gonna actually smoke up instead of a trap here Mu seems to know something's up and as well Soxa might be the one to catch them. In fact, he breaks the smoke and blinks away in time. TP out, can he make it? And he Absolutely. glimmers to ensure the retreat. Soxa, the gentle giant, has a killer instinct here. A great high Weeha's score. looking for a jump. He finds Fear. He gets off that first bet. He can force out the Sunder. He's got the ultimate available. Now, moving in. Rezo can pop up mid prevent from being a Sunder target. Fear, not gonna get it off. Locked oh, down. Oh, Has the Sunder. His teammate and that DC looks to walk away. Universe goes up. No, it doesn't have ravage. 30 seconds to go. And meanwhile, moves on him. He's going in again. He's got the Necros up. He's going. Sumail doesn't have enough mana for us. Split and his Wand only has one charge. And Renzo goes back in on top. On to Zion. Another great force down. EG being pushed to the limit here. He does have to beat Kibi on the way out. That lane of Rack's advantage is even further enabling the spreading of the map. Constantly shoving in a wave. EG. Decent wave clear. They don't have an Ember, a Tinker, like that amazing mobile hero that can constantly push out waves with ease. You're EG, you think you should be pushing out the waves yourself. You don't expect to be back in your base against this type of lineup. It's just too much. Misery getting involved. Misery in almost has that Bloodthorn or Daedalus at this point. It's like, that's crazy the amount of damage he's gonna be able to pop out too. And look at that. And True Strike is really good against Brewmaster, mind you. So he cannot, he can silence Sumail and then there's no evasion. Sumail will be food in the next fight with that. Or you can silence the Dazzle, prevent him from getting off a grave. Bloodthorn is actually really good this game for Misery. Still a ways away, but destruction on move bottom sends some illusions in any way to make this easier for DC to try to get into the base and take that next set of racks or even just a tier three tower. I mean, for EG, it, it only takes DC making one really oh, big wrong oh move. Chest. Not having buybacks. Terribly pushes that best. But keeping an eye on buybacks, we can see four Radiant Heroes currently have it, and I imagine they will look to maintain it. It's the insurance policy in case they do screw up. It also is the counter to the big team fight ultimates. EG have to force two rounds of mistakes if they're gonna easily walk towards high ground. It's just DC know that they're five men, just not yet. Still, even at this point, more than likely they can't stand up to EG, so DC is going to nap again. And EG, I think they've wanted to push and fight for the longest time. They've just not found the ability to do so. It's kind of been crazy. I mean, PPD buys the smoke, but just look at this Radiant Vision. They, they see everything. They see all of EG roaming around. All the lanes are pushing. As soon as you go for a smoke, Maybe you get one hero, DC will just push the other two lanes, and possibly they just completely scout it out and, and dodge. Even a clever ward has been up on the right side of the map for some time. The, the vision game has been increasingly impressive by DC as this game moves longer. That is the biggest thing limiting EG, more, more so than even the split push. The split push is fueled by that vision, and EG unable to deny it.
So Roshan was a long duration respawn, I believe. It's not going to be up for a little bit. So what do you do as EG until then? I guess you just have to keep the lines pushed out because that's all they're doing right now. At this point. Like you said, because of the vision, they can't really get out of their base. You're banking on one big screw up by DC, uh, and you definitely want the Aegis before you go high ground. You can't count on the Grave save for the Terrorblade uh, necessarily with a potential silence coming out, the roar, all the bashes they now have. Ooh. He's still saving that gold. Curious what he ends up going for. Right? I imagine up. it will be the Bloodthorn. EG are wrapping on mid, but there's nobody here yet for DC. A resolution could come through. Everyone's back at the game, it looks like, for DC. But top lane's already shoved all the way in. One Terrorblade Illusion is not going to fully stop this wave in misery. The man out in front has the X just for the safe return. Not he hits so the wave safe. once, oh, then he jumps away, hey. and they have caught him. Oh, it looks like it might not make it this time. With the weave up on top, they will get the kill. He immediately buys back, and they know. And this, this might be their best bet. Now we're back in the game, and here we go. They're just keep a pushing in. Misery trying to slow things down here, keep DC going while the top lane pushes in, courtesy of this large fear. He gets the first lane, Toxa, blinking in for the disruption, then Glimmers himself will purge fear, keeps the old man at bay, while the creeps can go in, the X of back, both are two, good thunder, the weave on the case, Grave is there, can they save the old man? Fear is still low, he's barely survived, the Cyclo coming out from the Brew Magnus, but Fear getting taken down, keep on, taking it, one more, they've got the disruption, the university blinks away, Renzo can he fight him in the trees? Meanwhile, it's Moo to the rescue for DC, pushing that Dyer's bottom lane in, forcing EG fallen. to buy back on the Terrorblade. They scout him Radiant's with the stop. He walks away from this, but Fear corners and corrals and will bring him down. In the end, EG get only a ranged Rex. They lose their tier 3 bottom. They are forced to buy back on Terrorblade, trading that only for a Kunkka buyback. And they used all of their abilities. EG, Universe, no Ravage, no Brewmaster Split. They used the Earth Splitter as well. Sunder just coming off cooldown. Pretty short cooldown for the, for the Terrorblade. Metamorphosis is the longer one. And he'll be back up in 62 seconds. So DC's Dyer's go time. I think it's right now, attack. even with the heroes down. In those 35 seconds are going to be crucial. Resolution getting gushed up as well as the spirit following him. He needs to get away and looks like he will be successful in doing so. And the Shadow Demon awesome. is just giving Fear absolute fits this game. Now he even has a butterfly, but that only makes his own illusion scarier to deal with as well. And Soxa is doing such a good job at initiating. When he goes in, he glimmer capes himself first so that EG, who has a gem on Universe, but he isn't always in front, can more safely get that disruption off. You see the pressure out mounting on Resolution though. Reflection. Forcing him back. The lanes are in a decent position for I'll EG right that. now. No Roshan respawn just yet, but Socks are going to scout out this latest movement. Top lane always going to be a thorn in their side. Until they gets to tier 4, it's still going to be okay. It's done a little bit of damage to the tier 4 back at uh, the base, but it's really minimal at this point. Now a Slark Butterfly. Gonna start to run into slot issues here for Terrorblade. Fear has farmed very well this entire game, but he'll need an MKB at this point. Ideally, you would love a Satanic. Potentially a BKB when that Bloodthorn's out, as you only have the mana to, to remove the, the Silence, and you really need to make sure you get off Sunder. We've seen even when he gets it off, DC can nuke him down pretty quickly. Well, the problem with Misery in that Bloodthorn is that he did have to buy back. Yeah. Bloodthorn being the most expensive item in the game is kind of, or second most expensive item in the game is kind of at this point. Yeah, it's, it may delay the item. We'll see if he even ends up going for it. Buyback always going to be paramount. But the game will settle down now, and, and the next clash, the next likely tension point is going to be when the Roshan respawns. Just under a minute, it looks like, before EG potentially have a crack at that. Both teams can kill him very quickly. Looks like they, they really want this tier 2 tower for DC. I'm surprised they haven't gone for it. It's they, so they've low gone for it numerous point. times, and EG have defended it with their life, almost more so than they did that top lane of Rax. Mail is sitting around it right now with Split ready to go. So, Resolution, he sees that, and he just doesn't want to go for it. And they have the creep wave coming in, but Sumail will take care Dyer's of it. He can go with BKB if he really attack. wants the tower. He is going to get stopped, Dyer's forces out the glyph, leaps fortified. away. It's in deny range now. I think they might just deny it at this point. That's still map control loss for EG, which means Roshan gets a bit more difficult and that's why they're they're kind of hesitant to deny it. Eventually they will. Dyer's Maybe worried about the start coming back in flat hit, but with that tower falls, you can see DC right into the Roche pit mod. But he's heading over there as well. They have Weave ready to go. They have the Astral in their provision, and DC are spread out this time. Again, it's the problem with the split push is that if you're spread out, you can't be in Roche together taking down this Aegis or... Right now. Trying to corral Misery, but he backs away to a safe distance. 
Meanwhile, Moo shoving in bottom. He's going to be the next target. The creep wave was cut top by resolution. DC with the spread offense, but they're close to getting caught. Universe is on the game. Ravage on three. He got Zoxa and Moo. Locked down. Focuses on them and will get the two crucial kills. Rezo is trying to push in mid, but they're a terribly delusion, slowing this shove down. This is a great timing for EG. Not only can they get those kills, they can maybe force up by the tank, but the age is at the very yeah, least. They actually have vision on Weeha right now. They have a deep ward. Don't know if they can go for him, and Renzo is sneaking around. Renzo is gonna find TPD. Grim Dust Universe is there. He's going to play on the way. Instead of dealing with Weeha, he's very down at this point. Well, Essence Ship stacks, though he has evasion. If he can heal up in this fight, it would be trouble. But Mir just clotheslines Weeha, crushes the Ursa. They're not split pushing, Mon. EG are starting to get the momentum they need to take that roast. That's three kills for them. DC, no objectives this time. This is very tense. There's nobody split pushing in, like you talked about. They're not really getting those objectives. And they were trying to just grab, though. What you doing? <laughs> the play. He should have challenged it and BKB. He's being very aggressive here. No Ravage. They do not want to fear getting an Aegis here, Maw. But I think they may have to accept it's going to be his. Soxa perhaps will risk a support life to try and steal this. Scouty with the poison, but the pings are plenty no for PPD. And they will grab the Aegis here. The cheese as well. Something they can pass to fear after the Aegis, so potentially he's got the extra life from the Aegis, the extra life from the Cheese, the extra life from the Sunder, and the Grave. Not to mention buyback, up to five extra lives if you really want to count them that way. I mean, those were some critical kills. He's not going for the Bloodthorn. Misery has picked up the Daedalus. It's that one Tidebringer proc that might be able to swing things their way. Somewhere Sing Sing is smiling. It's been a while since I've seen a Daedalus. Or perhaps okay. attacker nowadays. They're looking for Moo. The Astral heads the wrong direction. His boots of travel were cooling down. We will be able to TP out now, though. And Resolution, again, continues to just hunt. They're trying to find these big offs, but EG are being, I think, a bit more diligent about getting caught out of the base. They want to push together. They want to find another kill before I think they head anywhere else. So as for EG, next round of items, what's it going to be here? BOTs for Fear. Very important pickup so that he can deal with the, the waves and also push a lane out, come join his team, or get a lane of Rax, TP home to defend. Kunkka's X could be very big to cancel TPs, and on that note, DC, our smoke, the courier, completes an Aghanim Scepter for Brew, but Moo might be able to snipe it. Dyer's yeah, courier got it. has been killed. That's a full Ag down the drain and more, but here we go. Smell oh, comes in, he wants the three. Or it's gonna be that Ravage comes down as well. The it's universe a, is working for more, but here comes we are. Universe is getting knocked down, but so too is Misery. BPD brings himself. They're looking for Resolution about to buy Universe. He gets forced away. He's got the pounce, he got the angle, he gets the kill. Do they split push or do they dare fight the Metamorph committed? They are gonna reassemble here. Universe, a rare whip from him. They do Cyclone, the little slug. They try to surround him, but he BKBs. He now looks to run. Oh, look at that Just damage. Gets chunked down. He has the Shadow Blade. Is there detection right now? It doesn't look like it. Nothing on EG. He will make it out. This wave's not pushed up enough bottom. I think they'll be able to take care of this. And uh, the Necro unit here to go down soon as well. Resolution able to heal back up with the Shadow Dance after getting assaulted by Fear. It's a two for two engagement. Man, that Brewmaster not having an, his Aghanim Scepter. Sumail actually didn't even, he didn't even have close to buyback when the Courier died. And he just went in. I don't think DC realized there had a chance to click on the Courier to see whose item it was necessarily, but uh, Sumail at this point is very close to it. So they, EG dodges a bit of a bullet, potential bullet there. Now a Hurricane Pike for fear, so a nice kiting item to have against the Slark, against the Ursa. You want to keep your distance against the two Bash Lords and this is an item that will let you do it. Game number three, MKB picked up for the Slark and Wings is waiting to the faded breath at this point to determine who they're going to play up against right now. One lane of racks down on one side, a half lane on the other. And here comes Vizzer with the X marks clearing up some of the creep wave and resolution shadow blading up. Ah, welcome He's welcome by a century. He does have BKP. As long as the BKB is up, I don't know if they can kill him, even if they know he's there, but they can Moo? definitely force it out. Oh, I think Moo's been spotted. I think he might be able to get out now. Fear gets to the fourth. There's no Ravage, no bomb, and here comes the flank. This could be huge. Gotcha. They do find Sumail, they lock on here, they dash it. They blow him up, he can't get off the split. Dead for 80, no buyback for 60 gold, and PPD now trapped in the trap.
trees. They get the disruption to it. And all the while it's misery is hitting on the two three men. We're gonna be able to find more. Not just that, they go to the kill onto PPD, but maybe not. Resolution taking that earth splitter has the shadow dance. Fear blocking him in with the illusions on the other side. The universe does take Zoxa down. Can we not get stopped up? But like you said, that mid lane misery is still going to work. They cancel the side TP. He can't come home. But the terror blade army is angry and it's does manage to brain down Fuzzy Wuzzy. Universe committing the ravage from the dark pet from Rental. He gets out scot free. Tier 3 down. Catapult just flanking away slowly but surely at the range drag. Now two exposed lanes for EG, and perhaps more importantly, DC have stalled through almost the entire duration of the Aegis Maw, and if EG want to push, they're going to have to wait about 20 seconds here, and they do so without the rabbit. And they use the cheese on Universe as well, so both of those Roche items now down, or at least down soon for that Aegis coming out for EG. They do lose three heroes for DC, one of them being a support, Moo going down obviously. The biggest pick is Weeha. Down for 29 seconds. I'll I thought they could have gotten more done. Sumail, he did end up actually having buyback at the tail end of his respawn timer. Just doesn't feel like Universe has been able to have his customary impact in the offlane Ravage. So difficult to use reliably against double BKB carries, one of whom can dark pack it off, the other of whom can just enrage and walk away. You, you look back and you wonder, would a Void have done anything different here? Not the best five-man high ground hero, as he doesn't generally build into a mech or those types of items, but they would sure love to have a Chrono now. Not something EG can look back on, but normally when this team does well at TI, it is with Universe. Let's see Resolution just creeping. It's back to a protected, so if he goes in it, he oh. wants a kill. He wants a kill. He might get killed. Resolution, BKB, he wants Universe, gets one, two passes, but now he's caught by everyone. He has the Shadow Dance and get away. The Ghost is coming in, it will miss, it looks like for the most part. x Mark Misery, now he's caught. The Glimmer came, he's not gonna save him this time. He will fall. He does a buyback and instantly socks so he wants to cut the wave mid. So too does Resolution, but Zai scouted this with the ward. He knows where the Slark is, and Rezo knows he's spotted as the Shadow Dance is currently deactivated. This is a big opening for EG. Fear has metamorphosis. Ravage is up in 30. Split already at the ready. Buy back from the Kunkka. I'm almost starting to wonder, will EG consider trying to throw it at some point Radiant rather than just taking racks? But fortified. they work on the melee here with illusions. Dark is now down after this. How far do they want to go? Misery just cleans out the wave. Wow. Oh, dearie me. And the disruption as well. They might get the mid rack. That might all. That's Radiant's gonna be all they get, I think, at this point. They're fall. backing up together. Back, bottom lane pushing in, and the meanwhile, who wants this round opportunity? Two split committed. Huge double from Zai. He's going for more, and they blow up Zaxa. He's got five that victory, so it's wrong. This is the Ravage in misery. Will fall. Doesn't have five back. We are getting guided. PKB not saving a beer. Thinking about the throne now. He's hitting tier four. He won't beat Spencer. Going for Megas. Who's gonna take it? EG on the offense. DC. Slark has it, Beast Vester has it, no buyback for EG, no Ravage for AD. That gold change, it's 6,000 negative gold going the way of EG, they've lost 6,000 after that fight. I think uh, DC can just walk right down mid, they've got Mega Grip. Right, Spear from Fear. Fear is going all in, can he pull out in the clutch? It, there's no Ravage here, there is an Earth Splitter to stall, the stop could be huge, already Zai. Slowing things down, but I don't think Fear can really just go for the throne. There's nothing to TP to right now. He's gonna have to win a fight. The lanes are too pushed out as well. He has to go through buyback if he's gonna TP in or try to get into the base. He will have Metamorphosis though. They bought that much time. Slark Rapier purchase. He still has buyback. Here come the Megas. Back Straight so down soon. Resolution as well joining them. 
and EG are sitting behind their tier 4 towers. They know that's the last bastion of hope they have. Sumail is up in 32 seconds, still no buyback. Sasha, he's found an illusion. Wad, he wants more. But... They're building an army mod. These illusions turned against EG. Please, they can't clear this, I don't think. They do have ravage soon. 15 seconds, but so many ways to deal with it. And meanwhile, they're falling. We are sneaking around. Tier 4 down. Change it up fast. Pulling it out. Can EG answer? It's all on you, now. that didn't even want a captain. Players who are booted after winning Shanghai. Misery and Weehaw have proved the haters wrong. This team has done it. They go now to face Wayne, and there will not be a two-time repeat champion at TI6. That was an unbelievable performance. Split push.